I love being married. I've been married for a while. I love it. It's my favorite thing in the world, for real. I think it's the best. Uh, I've been booed for saying that. I know, I was on stage, a guy booed me, and he wasn't kidding. He was, was, he was, he was, there was hatred in his eyes. I go, I love being married, and he goes, BOOM! <laughs> Just spit flying out of his mouth. And then I found out he was divorced, and I was like, oh, do you think maybe your attitude had something to do with it? <laughs> Mr. Sparkle, like. I get it, like, it's, marriage is hard, and if you're divorced, like, I'm not judging you, but that guy shouldn't boo me, because I like something. Some people like coffee. I don't walk into a Starbucks and slap the coffee out of dude's hands, like, I had a coffee once. <laughs> you raised your hand, did you have a question? <laughs> Why not? If his wife was next to him, um, no, I, no, I, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't, you know. It, usually, when somebody boos me, I'm not like, let's get to know each other further. Uh, <laughs> sometimes people talking to people in the audience can backfire. I was doing a show once, and this dude, the tables were this way, and he was just staring at the wall the whole time. He's just staring at me, he's staring. And I was like, dude, are you gonna look at me the whole show? You know, are you gonna look at all? And he goes, I'm blind. And I'm like, oh. Uh. <laughs> Oh, I was like, okay, carry on, carry on. And then he turned and he faced me. I was like, dude, don't patronize me, man. Just go back, you're fine, you're fine. You don't have to pretend. So no, I didn't ask him. Uh, it's interesting being a comedian nowadays, because a lot of people will give you feedback. They'll tell you when they don't like a joke, they can find you online. A lot of my, my comedian friends, they hate that. They're like, oh man. I hate the feedback. Not me though, right? I enjoy it. The other day, someone told me, oh, I don't think you should do, I had a joke about sweatshop workers. They're like, I don't think you should do a joke about sweatshop workers because you don't even know what it's like to be a sweatshop worker. And I was like, actually, I've walked a lot of miles in their shoes. <laughs> So now I have a better joke about sweatshop workers. <laughs> the feedback helps. One night I was doing my act in a comedy club and a guy in the audience got mad. People, I told you, people get mad at the puppets. They freak out. One night I had a guy get mad during my act, but not at me, got mad at Romeo. I always have to set this up. I'm doing my act, okay? Romeo's on my right hand. There's a Clorox bottle with all these body parts made out of foam on my right hand. I'm in the middle, Romeo's on my right hand, and to my left, there's a drunk screaming and heckling, unmerciful, but not me. He's yelling at Romeo. <laughs> and it's, it's inane stuff. It's like, I'll meet you outside after the show. And I'm just trying to keep my act going, so I have Romeo talk back to the guy. All right, I'll go with you, but you have to carry me. <laughs> I'm working in the moment, right? And the guy will not be quiet. I finally say, sir, will you take it easy? You're ruining my act. He says, you be quiet, I'm talking to him. <laughs> I felt like I was living in a far side cartoon. <laughs> and the man will not give it up. He's, he's so angry, he runs up on stage as if I'm not there, runs right past me, runs over to Romeo, grabs his head, ah, sorry. He decapitates the body. Yes, he rips the head out of the Clorox bottle. If you can imagine, it takes the puppet head, just the head, and throws it. So Romeo's head is flying through the air. Being good at what I do, I had the presence of mind to make the head go, <laughs> So I got a good joke out of it. I'm gonna tell you a little something surprising about me. I I'm a vegetarian and uh, sometimes people get immediately offended by just my mentioning how I've chosen to live my life. I was doing a series of casino shows in, the, in Michigan, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and that is big hunter country. Those, go, those hunters hunt with crossbows. They do not mess around. And all I said was, 
I'm a vegetarian. And there was a guy at the back of the showroom, was about 500 yards from me, big casino showroom, a guy five, 500 yards away from me, and he was 360 pounds if he was an ounce. <laughs> All in camouflage. <laughs> which clearly wasn't working. <laughs> and all I said was, I'm a vegetarian. And he goes, oh, he shouts from the back of the room. Oh yeah, what's your belt made out of? Now, normally I don't wear a belt because if I want to keep my pants up, I use food. <laughs> Tonight I'm wearing a belt, but that night I was not. And I showed him I'm not wearing a belt. And he goes, oh yeah, well, what are your shoes made out of? And I showed him that like tonight I'm wearing canvas shoes. And a comedian with a survival instinct would have moved on. <laughs> I do not appear to be that comedian. <laughs> so instead of moving on, I thought, let me linger and see what happens. <laughs> So I said to this guy, I said, but sir, I have to say for a big burly hunter dude, you seem awfully fascinated with my accessories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't remember anything after that, but I woke up three days later in Indiana. There it is. I live in Los Angeles. That, that, that's home of the greatest hecklers in the world, is, is Los Angeles. Mexican hecklers are the greatest. If you ever want to learn to be a good heckler, study under a Mexican-American. They are the greatest ever, ever. I was at a bar a few weeks ago performing, and this guy wasn't even watching the show. He had his, his back to me, and at one point, he just turned around, and he goes, Hey, you better get funny quick. <laughs> And I don't take kindly to threats like that, you know? And what I mean by that is I left. I went home right away and just didn't do anything else. I was at a Dodger game one time and two rows in front of me, uh, this guy, uh, the, they were playing the Boston Red Sox and the, the Red Sox center fielder is a guy named Bradley. And this guy two rows in front of me just yells out at one point, he goes, hey Bradley, boo! <laughs> he personalized the boo. He wasn't like, this is a boo for everyone. He's like, just you, Bradley. Like, even the right fielder was like, that's not for me, you know? That's your thing, he got you there. I moved up to Boise. I'm originally from uh, the Bay Area, California is where I was raised. Woo and one woo. Is that somebody from the Bay Area? I like how I can't find you. You're like, heck, you're like a sniper heckler. You just come in from the middle and, uh huh. This is good. This is how it's supposed to go. You guys are doing great. Okay. Because a lot of audiences don't know. They think if you're having a bad show as a comic, uh, you guys always think you need to tell us. And you don't. We know if it's not going well. A month ago, I had the worst show ever. Ever. And this woman comes up after the show. She comes over to me and she's very subtle. She goes, and she goes, True story, she puts her hand out, she's shaking my hand, she goes, I did not find you entertaining at all. Aww. And I think she's kidding, I go, what? And she goes, <clears throat> I did not find you funny at all. Now, normally as a comedian, I have something to say back to that, but this time, that was hurtful. <laughs> and I realized what it is, nobody does that, right? Nobody, nobody, nobody in this room, no one shakes your hand and then says something mean. You don't do it. No one here, no one here has ever gone to a funeral. Gone right up to the widow like, glad he's gone. <laughs> Never liked him. Never, no one, no one does that. Not even women. Because I know women are way more hardcore than men. I know every woman in this room would love to go to a wedding, go right up to the bride like, you know you look fat in that dress, right? <laughs> and we went to college together. Should you be wearing white? Mm -hmm.
You guys are such a great audience. You've been so much fun, so amazing. Not all audiences are great. A lot of audiences yell out. They're texting the whole time. They're drunk. But I taught high school. I'm used to all that. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't care about that. Not all audiences are great. I had to punch a heckler in the face recently. Ooh, and she deserved it. I mean, I feel like... Some of you are laughing for the wrong reason on that. You're like, get her! No, 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 that was a joke, that was absurd. All mean hecklers are adult men, all mean hecklers. And they're mean to the staff, that happens a lot too. Mean to the staff, which I can't handle that. I don't like that at all. They kicked a he this heckler out recently because he was being loud, and they kicked him out. And he walked right by me, and he knocked over tables and chairs as he walked by. And I was like, ah, oh, that's terrible. So I picked him up and I followed out and then I went to video it because, I mean, it could go viral, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I figured I gotta get out there. I'm not a fighter, I wasn't gonna be involved. And then I heard what he did. He called his server a nasty, nasty word. Probably the worst, well, not the worst word you could think of, but <laughs> the worst word that degenerates could think of. And that's what he, and I was like, I can't. When I heard that, it flipped a switch, you know what I mean? It flipped a switch and he goes, listen, I wanna fight one of them. And I go, no, they work here and they can't, but I won't hesitate to knock you out. And then I pooped my pants a little bit. Um, <laughs> Because I've never been in a fight, ever. I mean, I've been beat up a bunch, but I was never in the fight, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he heard that and got excited and came running at me and he swung and he missed. And then he just kind of found my fist with his face, you know what I mean? Just found my fist with his face and then took a nap on the sidewalk. He fell like Glass Joe from Mike Tyson's punch out. Do you remember the like, <laughs> and then he fell. I was apologizing as he was falling. I was like, oh, no, 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 I've never done this before. I'm so sorry. <laughs> His girlfriend came running over and she's like, for crying out loud, Ethan, and threw her over. Like, like it happens every night. <laughs> she's just like, let's go and get out of here. It was so awkward. All my friends were like, does your hand hurt? He fell asleep right away. And I was like, no, it doesn't hurt. And they're like, wow, you must know where to hit a guy. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's it. No, I don't. I still don't, because my eyes were closed the whole time. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. I was freaking out. It gave me anxiety. But when the police didn't show up, and when that girl that picked him up and threw him over her shoulder didn't show back up to pummel me, <laughs> I was excited. Drinks for everybody, the whole staff. I was having a great time. And then I remember the owners of the club weren't at the club that night. And now I'm going to lose this club, the other club they own, all the work they booked me for around the country, and I'm freaking out. And then I get a notification that buzzes on my phone, and then I have way more anxiety. I pick it up, I look at it, and it's a Facebook wall post from the owner of the club, which means she wanted it to be public, right? She wanted everybody to see what she had to say to me. And this is all she wrote. I'm very disappointed I wasn't at the show tonight. <laughs> freaking out, that's all she wrote, that's it. And it had like three likes from other comments and I was like, hey, that's not nice, you know what I mean? Super upset, put it back in my pocket and then I was gonna leave and got another quick buzz in my pocket, picked it up and she had commented on her original post. Pretty disappointed I wasn't at the show tonight. Heard it was a real knockout performance and I was like, oh. This is amazing! And then I was the first of 89 comedians to like it. You know what I mean? Like, that was really and I went to the doctor, and this was, he, goes, he goes, you gotta stop drinking out of straws, Andy. Like, that's it? That's your prognosis? <laughs> I thought I was gonna die in your office. You're like, it's straws, Andy. Straws. <laughs> went from the craziest day of my life to the silliest day. <laughs> like, five minutes. <laughs> that's what I needed to cut out. <laughs> According to my doctor. <laughs> Less straw time. <laughs> Turns out it's impossible to give up straws. Impossible. <laughs> you guys ever try to go a week without using a straw? Straws are everywhere. Straw, straw. I see two straws from this stage. Straw, straw. <laughs> That's the word, straw. Thank you. Thanks for the heads up. I love it. That was the best heckle I've ever received. He just held, he just silently held something. You guys don't know how to be mean or heckle, do you? You're assisting 
I've never had a heckle assistant. Assisting heckle. Here, this is what you're referring to, Andy. That's it, right there. I present to you what a straw looks like. So I'm gonna kind of switch gears here. So those were some animal jokes and stuff, but I just wanna share a story about my dad. And um, I'm kind of been working on this bit and an interesting thing happened. So my dad passed away a few years ago and I've been trying to like work it into my act. Like I've been trying to like tell stories about him and it's been kind of hard. So I'm gonna share that with you and I'll share the story that I was working on and just something interesting that happened. And we'll kind of just see what happens. We'll see how it goes. This is exciting. So, <laughs> so um, when I was nine, I was having open heart surgery. And I was in the ICU, and it was around Christmas time. And I was hanging out with my dad. And uh, that day, the nurse came in and said, hey, we can have someone come in and see your daughter here in the ICU. And my dad was given two options. One option was Santa Claus. And the other option was Jason Fisk, the defensive end of the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> so he had to decide who his little girl would want to see the day before Christmas. <laughs> A bearded, overweight man came in. It was not Santa. <laughs> My dad chose Jason Fisk. He was on the Vikings, the Vikings player. I didn't know him, like, I was like, what's going on? But, like, that day, I got to see, like, how excited my dad was. Like, he was so excited. He was like, yeah! You know, they're hugging, they're taking pictures, and I'm like, hey, guys, I'm over here, you know? <laughs> and he got his autograph, and my dad was just so psyched. And as a nine-year-old, I saw that, and I noticed, like, how important football was to my dad. So I was like, this is it. I was like, that's what, I, I, I loved it so much, and we shared that together, so I became the biggest football fan because that meant I got to spend time with my dad. So every Sunday, that was our time, and we would get to watch, and it was so exciting, and I would get so amped up, and I wanted them to win so bad. Like, even as like a 10 and 11-year-old, I'm just shouting things, and I know way too much. I'm like, gosh darn it, Warren Moon! You know, <laughs> Chris Carter, get your act together! You know, why'd you guys go on that party boat? You know, I'm just, I'm just like really getting into it. So, <laughs> there's more to that story, and I was telling it. I was telling it recently. And as I was telling the story, like this was actually one of my first times ever doing a big headlining week at my home club. Actually the same club where I met my husband. So I was super excited to be doing the set. And as I was telling the story about my dad, like I couldn't get through it, and, like I couldn't finish my set. And I just felt just so awkward. And it was just, I just, it just, it was just really hard for me. And it got quiet, it was quiet like this. And I didn't think I'd be able to finish my set. And then someone in the back of the audience just shouts, your dad's proud of you. I know. And I just, I just lost it. And I was like, that is the best heckle <laughs> I have ever received. And it was just so amazing. So now I go around to different comedy shows and anytime there's like a lull, I just shout out, your dad's proud of you. <laughs> so amazing like it changes everyone's lives like it meant so much to me because like my dad wasn't a very vocal person but I could totally see him like paying someone to shout it you know <laughs> it's like yeah here you go you tell her she'll know it's me you know <laughs> so it was just a really cool moment thanks for letting me share that with you guys <laughs> this lady had the greatest heckle I have ever heard in my entire comedy career too right at one point I told a very funny joke and she goes I'm but I don't know why. <laughs> Before I go, uh, there's a fun group activity I think we could all do. Um, so I got heckled a while ago, which I know you guys find hard to believe because let's face it, I'm great at this, but I was doing a show at a music festival in a giant sold out room, hundreds of people. I get on stage and some guy from the back of the room starts calling stuff out. I can't even hear what he's saying. I can just tell he's being disruptive. So I make a joke about him being drunk, finish my set, and I get off stage, the show continues. And then I'm back in the green room and I'm playing around on my phone and I look on Facebook. I've got like 30 updates. They are from that guy. 
He found me to keep heckling me during a show I was now no longer a part of. And I admire his dedication, but it does make him the dumbest heckler in the world because at the beginning of this story, he's some guy, right? He's a faceless voice in a crowd. But Facebook works both ways, guys. Now he's Dan. I know where he works, and I've seen pictures of his kids. So what I do <laughs> is I film audiences yelling, Boo, Dan, we love Glenn Tickle, and then I send them to him on Facebook. <laughs> as like a fun reminder of our time together. <laughs> and I have comedian friends who see me do this before and they hate it. They're like, Glenn, you gotta stop doing that bit. And I say, why? And they say, because that happened in 2011. You're an adult. <laughs> you need to let things go. Never, I will die doing this bit. <laughs> so on the count of three, it's Boo Dan, we love Glenn Tickle. I'm gonna get out of here. You guys ready? One, two, three. I love you guys too. That is it for me. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful